Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. As you can see from the title, it will be about oil cooling of an electric motor. And my name is Martin Brada and I work for Ricardo as a thermal systems engineer. Let me introduce the project quickly first. It consisted of two main parts and it was a collaboration between two companies, Ricardo and EngineSoft. Whereas EngineSoft were responsible for running a particle-based CFD simulation and Ricardo were responsible for thermal modeling and subsequent experimental validation. As you can see on the right hand side, the core team consisted of four people, me and another colleague from Ricardo and two people from EngineSoft. Now let's talk about our motivation, why we decided to use this approach. Uh, first of all, we ran the simulation in a particle-based CFD software called ParticleWorks that is based on moving particle simulation method, also called shortly as MPS. And we wanted to investigate the capabilities of particle-based CFD as it is still a relatively new method in this industry and it has several claimed advantages. It should generally be more efficient with violent multiphase flows, which is exactly our case uh, of an electric motor. Uh, one advantage over traditional CFD that is based on finite volume method is the runtime that should be shorter and another is uh, much simpler pre-processing that is almost non-existent with particle-based CFD tools. Uh, there are also some general advantages of uh, CFD over prototyping. Prototyping is typically quite expensive and slow and it doesn't give you much insight of what's happening inside because you can only use a transparent casing but it doesn't let you see much so, whereas with CFD in general you can uh, use uh, powerful post-processing and to see uh, everything you want. Uh, to make clear what we are talking about, let's have a look at the geometry of the motor that uh, we were investigating. There are three sets of nozzles of four, so in total 12 nozzles, four on the one side and eight on the other side. When we look at the section, we have oil, fat, from the left side through the shaft there are there is first set of four nozzles here and then we have channels through the rotor that go to the other side and uh, another set of four nozzles over here on the right side so eight uh, jets for the right side and four jets for the left side uh, and now we will continue with the first last section of this presentation that will be about the fluid simulation that was done in particle-based CFD. So our main goal was to acquire heat transfer coefficients because we wanted to validate uh, measured temperatures at the very end of this uh, whole project. Uh, so, to do that, we actually needed to uh, run three separate simulations. So, you, you can see it here. Uh, the first one was just the internal flow uh, that we used to get the uh, flow split among different sets of nozzles that we talked about uh, in the previous slide. Uh, then we ran the airflow separately. We will talk about that later also, why we did that and uh, the last third simulation uh, was the final oil simulation and as the last step we exported the heat transfer coefficients uh, from the last third simulation. And now we will talk about each of these simulation in detail one by one. The first one is internal flow. Uh, we ran this simulation to determine the flow split among the different sets of nozzles, as I just said. This doesn't have to be done necessarily in CFD. We could have used also 1D, but it was quite convenient to do this whole process only in one tool. The particle size was 0.2 millimeters, uh, which resulted in 
2.5 million particles in total. Uh, we had automatic transmission fluid as the liquid with the volumetric flow of 1.93 liters per minute and the speed was uh, 2529 rpm. In this slide you can see the results so let me play the video. One thing we did as, is that we pre-filled the domain with oil in the very beginning so we didn't have to wait until the domain fills up with oil so that made the simulation much quicker and you can also see some dark cylinders uh, in proximity of each nozzle so those are actually outlets from the domain so with the help of those we were effectively deleting the particles from the domain because we didn't need them for this kind of simulation we were only interested in acquiring the flow rates through the nozzles to make sure we didn't have to solve for this internal flow in, in the later stages. This run took uh, roughly 4 hours on one uh, NVIDIA V100 GPU. So this was sufficient uh, and the flow was stabilized after this time. Now for your reference you can see the flow split we've got. So this first set of nozzles got 47% and uh, then we had uh, 19 through the nozzles on the rotor and 34% on this uh, through this last set of nozzles. So we have roughly 50-50 split to each side, 47 on the left side, uh, 53 on the right side. And now we come to the second simulation of air. Uh, there is some background behind this. Generally it is recommended to simulate air at higher rotational speeds because under those circumstances the airflow can uh, heavily influence the flow of the oil or any liquid we have in the domain. So the most conservative uh, approach is to run a true two-phase simulation which means uh, having oil particles and air particles uh, in, this, in one simulation but, uh, but the particles have to share the same particle size which is very uh, ineffective because the air has to fill the whole domain but, but the liquid is just a fraction of it so by adding air we multiply the number of particles several times or even by an order of magnitude typically so it makes the simulation much much slower. However the Particleworks software allowed us to decouple the oil and air flow because it can map uh, flow field from any external CFD simulation or, or a different particle work simulation. So, that's exactly what we did, as I will explain right now. We aimed for 0.2 mm size for the oil particles, which provided us with uh, adequate resolution that we wanted to achieve, but it was too fine for the air. So instead we ran just one phase simulation, only with air particles with the size of 0.5 mm, which resulted uh, only in 6.1 million particles in total, which is uh, acceptable. Uh, whereas if we used the same 0.2 resolution as for the all particles, it would result in 16 times more particles, because obviously the uh, total number of particles is inversely proportional to the third power of particle size in uh, 3D space. Uh, with this approach we introduced some simplification. Uh, we knew how the air would uh, affect the oil flow, but uh, we neglected how the oil flow would uh, influence the air flow, flow field. But we consider this as completely acceptable. Uh, here we can see the results visually again. Oh, let me play the video. We are hiding the slowest particles, 
to make sure we can see the fast particles near the rotor and then we could uh, map these results on roughly a one millimeter grid and then use it in the final third simulation. It takes uh, roughly 15 hours to run one second on one V100 GPU but this should be understood more as a rate at which the simulation runs because uh, less time is needed to uh, achieve steady state flow field. Uh, typically just several tenths of a second are sufficient, so it's a couple of hours of runtime. And now we come to the last third CFD simulation of uh, oil. Uh, as we discussed before, we used the airflow field from the previous second simulation and also we used the flow rates for the nozzles from the first simulation. So as you can see here in the picture, the inlets were right here in the nozzle and we didn't have to solve uh, for the internal flow anymore, so which helped us a lot to reduce the total runtime again. And the oil particle size was, as discussed before, 0.2 millimeters. Here we can see the results visually, so I will play the video. We have a view on each side of the motor. And as you can see the oil starts accumulating on the windings and at the very end it starts dripping from the windings. So I will let it play once again so you can see how it looks. Now to the outcomes from the simulation. So it took uh, six days to run three seconds, again on one NVIDIA V100 GPU. This time was sufficient for the HTCs to stabilize. When we add this runtime up with the previous two simulation that took uh, just a couple of hours, we are at about seven days in total for all three simulations. Uh, that by itself is not very bad, but there is a potential for improvement, of course. One thing is that we could use more powerful hardware, because one GPU is not uh, very much. So if we ran it on two, four or even eight GPUs, it would have been much, much quicker. Uh, another thing is that uh, the solver settings uh, were quite conservative. We possibly could use larger time step and also increase the particle size slightly. So that would have helped uh, as well. And uh, as the last step we had to export the HTCs, which was uh, the whole reason why we were doing all of this. So we averaged the last 0.3 seconds and uh, Average that over this interval and exported the HTC values. So here you can see the results. I took uh, one frame from the video and uh, here you can see the resulting heat transfer coefficient values on the surfaces. We have peak values of around 850 watts per meter squared Kelvin and the average over the winding surfaces is around 220 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So that, that's the end of the CFD simulation and now we come to the second section of uh, this presentation which is the thermal simulation. This part was done by Ricardo and we carried out the simulation in FIERS, which is our finite element analysis software uh, developed by our division Ricardo Software. In the simulation, we considered only the stator components and the windings, because there were no temperature sensors present uh, on the rotor, so there was no point in simulating that as well. Otherwise, it was a standard finite element uh, thermal model with all the components, with uh, defined materials and uh, thermal couplings uh, between the components. On top of that, we had uh, heat sources defined according to the experimental operating conditions. 
and to, we were specifically monitoring temperatures at six locations uh, that uh, were representing the locations uh, of the thermocouples in the experiment. Uh, the last important input was obviously the HDC map from the CFD simulation that we mapped uh, on the surfaces. However, we could not have used the HTC values directly from CFD because as you can see here in the pictures, there is uh, some coating on the windings uh, that we did not model explicitly in the FE model. So what we did as we, is that we used this well-known formula for overall heat transfer coefficient and introduced this additional thermal resistance uh, from the coatings. So we knew the thickness and the thermal conductivity and uh, reduced the HTC's, HTC values by doing this. Here you can see the final temperature field. Uh, we are not showing the full scale intentionally because it's confidential, but it gives you an idea about uh, relative distribution of temperature. One thing you can notice, for example, here is that the top of the windings is colder than the bottom, which was an expected result because we have seen that uh, the oil was accumulating here at the bottom, so this part is cooled uh, at faster rate. So now we come essentially to the highlight of this presentation, which is the comparison between the experiment and the simulation. Here in this plot on the right hand side, we are showing the absolute temperature difference between the experiment uh, and the prediction from the simulation. Uh, the highest temperature deviation was recorded on thermocouple 4, that was plus 2.8 degrees centigrade. Uh, and we in Ricardo aim for plus minus degrees centigrade difference for this kind of application. So all these points fell uh, comfortably within this range. So this is a very positive result for us. Our conclusion is that this approach that utilizes particle-based CFD is sufficiently accurate and fast enough for industrial use. And uh, as discussed, we see some potential for further reduction of runtime by tuning the time step and particle size and by using more powerful hardware. But uh, overall, this is a very positive outcome for us. Uh, this is all for this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye.